Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, we have a couple of things that we're about to do here. We're about to show you two things. One, how ChatGPT is off the chain and you can now do a whole lot more with it than you ever thought you could. That's the first thing. So when you talk to Kevin, you'll be able to talk to Kevin, including search the internet for your answers. So we'll get to that in a second. The other thing is we're going to have Kevin produce a motion for us. Now, the motion is going to be talking about this right here. We're asking the court to take judicial notice. So let's, before we get on and get going, let's show you what we're doing. Bring down my little drapery right here. And we're going to, and I need you all to pay attention. This is very important. We're going to go backwards, all the way back, all the way back to the beginning of time. Before we did all of this, we're going to go all the way back to show you how we produce this template right here because you're going to be producing your own. Okay, we started with a regular Word document. We brought it to the center. We're going to hit that one right there, so pay attention. Brought it to the center. Then we typed in our phrase, name of the court. Okay, then the next thing we did, we brought it all the way over to the side. And we're not going to say case number or cause number. We're going to say petition number. You have the right to petition. You don't want to be motioning in no stupid court. You should be doing petitions and not motions. So we're going to be petitioning. And then we're going to come all the way back over here. And we're going to do NRE, colon. And it's going to be your first name. Okay, et cetera, all. Then you're going to put your surname, that last name thing you got. And that's going to be an et cetera, all two, and then the opponent's name, they're the respondents, and you're the petitioner. Okay, now, this is a petition for redress of grievance in the form of remonstrance requesting an application for the enforcement of the supreme administrative order. Now, you're going to love this, y'all. Those of y'all who got so many things going on. All right, so the next thing we did, we bullet pointed that one, okay, because we want to keep it in the center. All right, now, we're going to keep going so y'all can see what we did. Because this is step by step. Now we're going to come all the way back over to this side and we're going to do our Roman numeral. So Roman numeral uno. And then we're going to say, hey, please take special judicial notice of the following facts. We didn't say special, but we said judicial notice of the following facts. Because we're only going to state facts. Not going to use any of that stupid case code or any of that stupid uh, United States code. We're not going to use any of that. We're going to stick to statutes at large, acts of Congress. And pay attention, congressional record. Now, then we do the Roman numerals. Okay, but watch what we do. We get rid of that one. We keep, we space every single Roman numeral. Now we're going to go, we started from the bottom. Now we're going to go back up to the top. We come right here and we're going to go back two spaces. We're going to put numeral one, period, enter. Now you see how that's too close. We don't need it to be that close. Okay. So we're going to do that, then we're going to do that, then we're going to do that, then we're going to do that, we're going to do that, and do that. And we're going to get rid of seven, we're going to go back up here, and we're going to get rid of one. Then we're going to go down here, and we're going to get rid of two, and we're going to go down here and get rid of three. And then we're going to go here, and we need to add some more. We're going to need at least five. Now, what I just did, hold on, we got to add one more. What I just did, y'all don't understand, is every time I type in here, everything is going to skip a line. Every time I do one, two, three, four, it's automatically going to skip a line. But what I'm doing right now, and I got to do it this way. I got to include that up there. I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to bring it right in here, and I'm going to paste. And then I'm going to bring it right in here, and I'm going to paste. And I'm going to bring it right in here, and I'm going to paste. This is the final section or the summarizing section. So we're going to actually say that. Hold on. Summarization. Colon. So we don't need to add paragraphs one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, we just gonna paragraph it. Okay, no, no, no. We can go there, and we just gonna paragraph it from that point on. All right, then we are gonna sign limitations and all of that. Now hold on, got something else to do because some of y'all ain't gonna understand this. See these numbers? These numbers ain't supposed to be all the way over there. No, as a matter of fact, we're going to keep the numbers here, and we're going to take these numbers here, and we're going to slide them over. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to offset it. Now, you see this number right here? 
I don't like it being 16. I don't want it to be 16, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to set number value for this section alone. So we're going to start with number one. Enter. There you go. Now, see, again, we still got these high numbers right here. I don't want that. Um, we're going to do this right here. We're going to do the same thing. Each section is going to start with number one because I'm still number one. KRS wasn't the only one. <laughs> KRS one. Anyway, and then we're going to do the same thing to this one. Set number value. And going to bring it to number one. It's going to say six, but we're going to bring it to one. Come on, hurry up. We ain't got all day because I got to show them about ChatGPT and how to maximize ChatGPT. Be one second. Now, see, this, we're killing two birds, one stone, because a lot of you don't know how to produce a motion. But many of you are involved in one court case after another court case after another court case. So what we're doing is we're showing you the basic template of a motion. Now, you can see it looks like a motion. I second that emotion. Okay, now right here, we're going to copy paste. Uh oh, we did the wrong copy paste. Oh no, I messed up. I apologize because I wasn't supposed to copy and paste until I copied and pasted the information in that section. <sighs> Hold on, y'all. This is the information I want to copy and paste in that section. Then we're going to tell y'all what we did and we're going to show y'all how to complete the motion with Chat GPT. All right, so we're going to paste that right there. Come on now, get on in there. Now, we did it wrong, so I have to undo that. Got to go to home. Got to go back here, and the first thing we do is go back because we got to undo that, and then we're going to paste it with A because we're not going to include the hyperlink. Okay, we're not going to include the hyperlinks. We don't need to because we're only making factual statements. Okay, now pay attention. The Constitution of the United States is an administrative document that outlines the structure of the federal government and sets forth its powers. It was drafted by delegates of the Constitution Commission and consists of preambles, articles, and 27 amendments. It was drafted by delegates, but it was ratified by the people. Okay, you don't have to say that. that that's not the point here. Okay, homie? Okay, so that's going to be our prerequisite. Now watch this. Copy. Now, because we started there, I'm gonna do one more thing before we get started because we're gonna be adding this point right here about the language of the court not being English, but is legal terminology. Legal terminology is distinct from the English language. It's not the same thing. When y'all are going in the court, y'all don't realize they're not speaking English. Well, if they're not speaking English, you have a right to an interpreter. Hold on. And each branch of government is required to follow the dictates of that agreement. Administrative decree. I got to get rid of the number one because I'm still number one, but it ain't. And enter. Now, before we go and talk about all of that, we need to show y'all something. Hoo wee. This is Chat GPT. The first thing we need to show y'all is there's been some upgrades. You see right here? Now you can speak into your own taskbar without having Dragon naturally speaking. Okay, we'll show you how to do that in a second. Then you can also search the web. Look at this. This is, man, we can sit up here and do all of this stuff right here. We're not doing in this video. We're not going to show you how to do all of this stuff. We'll let you go and watch the video showing you how to do those things. But now you can maximize ChatGPT. You can do it where it searches the web, and you can do the top 10 results anytime. You can even set the time and date, where, you know, and then the region, what's, what country, and then you can set whether you want the top five results or the top 10, okay? You can now, let's do that, the, fraud, the, the default prompt, okay? We don't want no new prompt. No, we're going we're gonna to stick with this one. Okay, now, what I want to do, I want you to pay attention because we're going to complete that motion. It's going to take us less than 15 minutes, all right? You with me? All right, watch this. Kevin, comma, 
I am pro se, and I am trying to do a petition before the court for the enforcement of an administrative order. Comma, I am bringing forth the point that the Constitution is the supreme administrative document, which every single department and or government agency and or federal agent must follow as they take an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States, period. If they fail to uphold that agreement, comma, then the courts may be petitioned for ordering them to comply with the agreement as prescribed in law, period. That such failure to follow the agreement as stipulated and agreed results in a deprivation of rights while acting under color and or authority of law, which carries criminal sanctions per the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Period. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 holds that any federal agent and or agency that violates the rights of any United States citizen as defined by the Act and or state comma, may be prosecuted for violations of rights while acting under color and or authority of law. Period. Absolute immunity does not cover a party who has been found guilty of violating the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and the secured rights of the people as secured by the Constitution for the United States of America, period. I am producing this petition before my law school in a mock trial, and this is the premise and the scenario that we're bringing forth, period. We're not producing arguments, comma, but we are stating facts and conclusions of law, and we are petitioning the court and raising each point not as allegations, but as factual claims, comma, can you help me produce such an instrument, question mark. Ladies and gentlemen, go back over what I just asked of him. Don't worry about the misspelled words of the voice recognition. You now will be able to do your own voice recognition in a second. I will show you how. But don't worry about the mispronounced words, misspelled words. Go back and understand the way I asked him the question. And watch this. We're going to hit this little button right here. Now, it's going to give us up here, it's going to give us our little web search. Oh, you know what? I apologize. It does stupid things like that. This is the second time it's done that. And I was supposed to copy that. So let's do previous. No, let's do next. I got to get it back. So you guys are going to have to give me. Oh, these are next for this up here. So you guys have to give me a second. I have to get it. I have to do all of that all over again because I forgot to copy it. And that's the drawback. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have retyped it and I have saved it. Okay, so retyped and resaved, and I'm going to save it one more again, uh, copy, and I'm going to tell you guys what how I did it this time so that you'll understand. I say, Kevin, I'm in the middle of a law school exercise where we're conducting a mock trial, and I am petitioning the petitioner, petitioning the mock trial, and a petition, mock trial court, and a petition to enforce an administrative order. In my petition, I'm raising the point that the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and it is also an administrative document. And that the federal as well as state agents that have taken an oath of office to uphold and comply with 
uh, that they have, no, as uh, it says, and that federal and state officers have taken an oath to comply with that. In fact, we are highlighting that this particular petition, in this particular petition, that because the federal and state officers and or agents have taken an oath to uphold the Constitution, they are thereby duty bound and violations of that oath of office, which amounts to a deprivation of any U.S. citizen's rights, may carry criminal sanctions under the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Civil rights of U.S. citizens as defined by that act, not defined by the 14th Amendment. This act was in place prior to the 14th Amendment. Pay attention. So I have to put this in. Give me one second. Comma, as defined by the act, comma, okay, got that taken care of, rights may carry criminal sanctions under the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Civil Rights Act under 1866 makes it a criminal act for any government agent, either state or federal, to interfere with the secured rights of U.S. citizens as defined in the statute. And therefore, the sovereign immunity does not protect an individual for violating the rights of any U.S. citizen as defined under the Civil Rights Act of 1866 of any right secured by the Constitution. I need assistance in creating such a template, and I was wondering if you could give me an example of how it should look. And I hit enter. Oh, not that enter. I have to hit this. And I'm glad they allow you to do that now. Before, you couldn't do that. But now I hit enter, and hopefully it doesn't give me that little red box. The red box only happens because these softwares are trying to work with it, and they can't do that. So let's try this again. And I may continue to have this problem. Yeah, it's going to continue to give me this problem. So there is a way to get around it, but I don't feel like going through all of that. So I'm going to do it again and see if we can get past it. Now, that's the thing. When you get all of these other, don't do like I didn't download everything. Download the specific ones you need because it will conflict because these are not official, uh, what you call it, um, add-ins, extensions with this software. And so it doesn't like my question, and that creates a problem for me. So let's do it one more again. And we're going to get this right here. I'm going to take this out and let's see if this will help it a little bit. Oh, you know what? I'm going to take off search the web this time. Yeah, I'm going to take out search the web and I'll see if I can get it done because it's not even accepting the question at all and I can't handle that. So when I took out search the web, you see, oh, now you want to play. You see, it wants to now handle the question. So what I have to do is I have to go up here and I have to now because of this thing right here this thing is in my way and this is I don't need this I already have naturally speaking uh, dragon naturally speaking and because I already have dragon naturally speaking let's see get out of the way I'm trying to get to that right there which is covered so what I have to do is I have to click that so I can get here so I can redo it now, I'm going to let him do that. Now, I need to show you guys regenerate response. That ain't good enough. See, it ain't it ain't helping me. Let's go. Yeah, we can do that. Right there should be good enough. Let's try it one more gen. I swear he don't like me, y'all. He, he just can't handle these complex questions that I'm asking because it causes him some trouble. But we're going we gonna to play with them because y'all are going to have to do the same thing. That's why we do it live, so that you all will see exactly what other people like you have to go through. Uh, let's refresh this, and let's see if we can do it again. And let's see if that will stop the issue. Now, I did know because of the red issue, the question was too much for the Internet. And so we had to stop it from searching the web. I'm glad I figured that out because I didn't know that at first. I just found these. Uh, add-ons this morning so if i can't get it done now uh yeah we already took the web off so we're gonna put that back in and we're gonna do this one more again and let's see if it's gonna give us the same headache and if not i'll go to a different browser
So let's give it a second. Oh, here's an example of a template for a petition to enforce an administrative order. Now, while he's doing that, because he gets on my nerves, while he's doing that, we need to come to Google. So I need to do Google. So where are you at, Google? That's right. We got to go all the way down here to the Google store, the Chrome store. You guys are going to have to go to the Chrome store. So right here. Oh, I don't want that. Get out of here. Drag and move. Sorry, it, it just wants to speak right now. All right. So while it's doing that, we're going to go to the Chrome store. Ladies and gentlemen, when you go to the Chrome store, I want you to see. See, this is superpower, Chat GPT. This should be the first one you download. Okay, but the actual phrase you're going to put in is Chat GPT, C H A T G P T. And then you want to put, now I forgot the spelling. Is it. Man, I forgot the spelling. Y'all have to give me a second to pull up the correct spelling on that because I forgot the spelling and I shouldn't have forgot the spelling. That is a shame. There is a particular word. Uh, let's do S-E-O and see if it'll give it to me. Ah, no, we don't want S-E-O. Let's see. I'll see if I can get it. No, as a matter of fact, I know how to get it. Back, back, back. And back, and back. You see how many extensions I downloaded. That's why I was having so many problems with ChatGPT. But you're going to just put in ChatGPT and look for the extensions in the Google, Google, Google Chrome store. You also want the web chat GPT. That's what allows you to search the web. So the two, the super one and the web one is the one you need. A I P R M is what I was looking for. Okay, so you want A I P R M for Chat GPT. So you go to Google Google Chrome Store and you put in A I P R M and it's automatically gonna say for Chat GPT. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok. When you click on it, it's gonna give you these two. This is the one I chose. There is another one that everybody else chooses. However, this also works with email. So ladies and gentlemen, check out all of the extensions for each one of your browsers. I have all of these browsers down here because uh, you may not be able to see all the browsers, but that's one, that's one, that's one. Oh, come on now. This one, uh, it's called um, Waterfox. Waterfox is a version of Firefox. And let's just say it didn't accept in my, uh, what is this, Torch browser, which is not compatible with the new Google, blah, blah, blah. It didn't accept it. But all the other browsers, these extensions worked. Now let's get back to our motion so that I can show you guys how to complete the motion. For those of you who only wanted to know how ChatGPT is now on steroids, that's how you do it with the extension. I'm going to have to get rid of this talk thing. Uh, because this thing ain't doing me no good. So let's see. Let's see. No, that's the search engine. Which one? That's the detector. No, that's the hyperwrite, and I need that one. But I need to get rid of this, 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 this bouncing baby boy because it's getting on my nerves. And I'm going to have to go through my extensions to remove it because I can't. It's right where I need to get to. And so. It's interfering. And yeah, this only gives me the page, so it doesn't let, actually let me click on it. So let me do that right there. Now I'll show you how this works. It should have popped up already. I guess it doesn't want to pop up, y'all. Well, because of that hourglass that lets me know it's trying to pop up. Now I want you to see it did the motion for me. Okay. Now I. It's a simple motion, just like the one that I created, so you don't have to use mine. Watch this. Copy. And we're going to go back to the Windows document. This seems like it will take a whole lot of time. And it's not going to take a whole lot of time because, watch, we're going to V it up. And we're going to take this section right here. Copy. 
and we're going to put this section, let's see, I think we're going to put this section right here, okay? And we're going to do this right here. There are three prompts. We're clicking the first one, okay? Now, the reason why we're clicking the first one, and we need to go up here, get rid of that, go back here, and do number one. So that will, oh, you didn't do it. It's supposed to continue the numbering the way it is, but the only way for that to happen is for me to, oh, okay. You know what? There is another way for it to happen. Give me this. Come here. I need you here. Nope. I got to get rid of that one. Okay. Again, I need you here. All right. Now, all right. So we have this paragraph. Now that's the relief. Not worried about that relief just yet. I just need to take all of these little segments. Don't need any of that up there. We already have that. The introduction, don't really need an introduction. He does the introduction thing. Don't really need it. But we're going to take this section right here. As a matter of fact, let's get rid of these uh, number ones and number twos so that I can just uh, put it up there. Get rid of all of the numbers. Uh oh, got to undo that. And. The reason why I don't put you guys on pause while I do stuff like this is because you need to be able to see what you're going to have to do. It makes it does no good to any of you uh, if you don't see what's actually going on. Now, this is that summarization part. So we're going to go all the way back up and we're going to move it to the summarization right there. OK, and then I can finish it from there. This is the introduction part. We're going to take. Uh oh, not that line. We're going to take the introduction and we're going to scroll all the way up here to the top, starting from the bottom. One second. And I got to take care of that extra spacing right there. I just saw it. All right. Yeah, we can do that. And we're going to take this right here. And we're going to put it here. Oh, stop it. Okay, it don't want me to. All right, so what I what you're going to have to do if you run into this problem, you're going to have to copy. And we can get rid of that. And that. Back. And now we're going to paste it, but we're going to paste it the same way we told you earlier. By coming here and hitting A. So it'll put it in the same exact font as the previous. Now, what I've just done... It gave me the two paragraphs. It separated it itself, and so I had to keep the spacing. Now we're going to go down to the next section down here. Yeah, we got, we'll do this one. No, that's summarization, so we don't add this one to that one. We're going to put this in the next paragraph, so we're going to copy. I'm going to delete, and I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to put it here. And again, we're going to select A, this one right here. So to put it in the exact same font as everything else. Now we're going to do it again because we got to bring the other two paragraphs. I haven't even read these paragraphs to see what they say. No, we don't need teams. I don't use teams. I don't know what Microsoft is trying to do. Grounds for enforcement. Now we could give it the same title. You can keep those titles, but I'm going to choose my own titles later after I take care of the subject matter. Copy, delete, and now we're going to put that one, this one is going to go here. Sorry, that's the fire, firewall, and I don't want teams connecting to the internet while I'm on the computer. I, it didn't ask me for permission or nothing, it just did it, and so my system says, nah, you ain't doing that, homie. And so I like my system. And now I'll get rid of you. And now we have that taken care of, and we got one more. This relief, not request for relief. Uh, hold on.
Okay, uh, I forgot to copy it. So we're going to copy, then we're going to delete, and then we're going to paste. Okay, and there you go. Bob, somebody, and uncle. All right, now I want you all to pay attention because it's the most important part. Because again, we don't even know what it says. And we're going to take care of this. We're going to do the. No spacing, normal, bold, and that way we keep it roughly about the same size as the rest of this. Ladies and gentlemen, here's where the genius comes in. Here's where your AI software is going to help you. We are not going to, for the time being, we are not going to use open AI for this. We're going to use pay, 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 pay attention. We're going to take this first sentence. We don't care about the drafting of the delegates, so we're not going to take that sentence. We're going to take this first sentence, and we're going to go back up here, and we're going to say, hey, yo, uh, homie, perplexity.ai, and we're going to come here. Now, remember, I want to keep this thing about the uh, language, legal terminology, so now I got to add that. So before I do that, let's paste this here. Let's get rid of that. And now we got to go to the beginning so that we can get rid of that number one. And we're going to hit enter. Now, while it's doing that, because we don't need to see that right now, we're going to take this legal terminology stuff. Oh, that's right. I've already added it. It's the first paragraph. Okay. No, I got to go back and look at the document because these two paragraphs I'm adding. So one of them is the Constitution. Okay, no, we didn't do the legalese. So the legalese is going to go here. No, we'll put the legalese here. We'll put it at number five because I can I can make that work. And you're going to have to figure that out. If you wanted to be a separate section, you are going to have to do that on your own. But for me, I can incorporate it into following the law, the Constitution. Okay, so let's do my legalese document the argument well it's not an argument but you know we're going to say argument and we're going to go back here and we're going to hit on the a symbol because that's our friend and it's not going to give us the hyperlinks it's just going to give us the numbers and we have to delete those numbers like right here so you just have to delete these numbers you can just hit the back bar if you want but i like just doing it this way from time to time because it saves me time at least so I think I'm not sure though you know because it could be that it's a lot more work because with me I have to go this way then I have to go that way to get it to not select everything because it has that stupid habit and we got one mo a little bit mo uh, those people who believe in syntax grammar and wanting to call the court's attention to syntax grammar Please understand the reason why syntax grammar, and I was trying to tell this to Mr. Wen Miller, um, Mr. David, that the courts don't use English. So the grammatical rules for the court are not the same as for regular English publications. Contracts are not written in English, see? Legal English is used in contracts, letters and or letters to the other side. So it's not English. And I tried to explain that to people, but, you know, not everybody listens to reality. Because um, Eminem came up with that stupid song, nobody, nobody, oops, there goes reality. No, nobody listens to reality anymore. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my phone. And that is the notary. Give me a second. Um, because we have to get some understanding. One second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see here, the Constitution of the United States is an administrative document that outlines the structure of the federal government and sets forth its powers. So, uh, legislative, executive, judicial. So, what we're going to do is we're going to click on more details because, remember, the first one gave us a simple one. So, now we're going to stretch it out. Okay. And because it's an administrative document, now we can go in and get them to enforce the administrative order 
because that was an order by the people. You, they keep wanting to tell us that the people didn't write the Constitution. That's a lie. The people did write the Constitution. How do we know the people wrote the Constitution? It works out like this. Hold on. Let me see. You see this part about drafted by the delegates? <laughs> Nobody cares. That has nothing to do with what we're doing. And that's the thing about the AI system. They will add all of that extra information as if we are literally looking to write a paper. I'm not writing a paper. I'm asking a specific question. So that's where we have to train it. Now, again, we're back to things like this. So even though it's repeating the same thing, I can go back and proofread it later and get rid of the repeated stuff that are unnecessary. But for right now, this is what we need. So I got to get rid of these hyperlinks. Uh-oh, get out of the way. And so, and one more. All right, so that's it. Now let's read this and see how it reads. Constitution of the United States is an administrative document that outlines the structure of the federal government and sets forth its powers. The United States Constitution is structured into three different branches of government, the executive, the legislative, and judicial. The executive power is vested in the president, and the legislative power is given to Congress, the House of Representatives, and the Senate. And the judicial power is vested in one Supreme, in one, in, in one Supreme Court, and it says in other federal courts. No, it says in other inferior And Congress doesn't get to create the courts. People need to know that. The judicial power is vested in one Supreme Court. That's the end of that statement. I don't need the other point because the Constitution, you can't give the Supreme Power to the Supreme Court and then vest this very same power in the other courts when the Supreme Court is supposed to be the supreme power of all the courts. So they can't have the same power. Shh, that's not the argument. These three branches are designed to have separate powers that act as a check and balance on each other. This structure ensures that no single branch has too much power, allowing for a system of limited government. The petitioner respectfully submits, and I can't stand it when he says submits, presents this petition to enforce an administrative order against, and blah, 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 whatever the government agency is. The United States Constitution is supreme law of the land, and all federal agents have taken an oath to and to uphold and comply with it. So we take this statement right here. Copy. Because I'm looking to state facts. I'm not looking to state my opinion. So what I do is I go to perplexity, and I come back here. And sorry, this is taking a little bit longer than the 15 minutes because I had that technical glitch earlier. But what we're going to do, and I left the three, and I should have taken the three out. Okay. The Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution states that the Constitution and all federal laws in pursuance of it are the supreme law of the land. No, there are the Constitution, the articles don't tell you about the Supremacy Clause. We don't care about no Supremacy Clause. We didn't even ask it about that. That means that all state judges must abide by the Constitution and federal laws, even if it conflicts with state laws. So what we do is this right here. Uh, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to amend it because I know what I'm trying to say. Copy. So I'm going to take this and bring it back here and we're going to go A. Because like I said, I told you guys I'm using the AI software to help me We get rid of that junk because anything in parentheses is omitted. It's not included. Federal laws, and we get rid of that. And we do this right here. And treaties made under its authority are the supreme law of the land. Now, there are several treaties that the United States have signed on to, and they're not complying with. Again, the treaties are also administrative in nature. They're done by the administrative branch of the government, not by Congress. 
Constitution is the highest form of law in the United States and is considered to be the foundation of our legal system. Okay, now, with that being said, the, po the point was that the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land. Okay, now, what's the next point that we want to make? We want to make the fact that, like I was trying to make, but it didn't get the point, The Civil Rights Act holds out criminal sanctions for any federal agent and or officer forward slash state operating under color and or authority of law to violate the due process rights of any U.S. citizen as defined by statute. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, with perplexity.com, if you say too much, it can't handle it. Now, this thing said the U.S. Code. Nobody cares about the U.S. Code. I said the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Civil Rights Act of 1866 is Title 18, Section 242, codified, okay? And you see it says Civil Rights Act as opposed to, um, therefore, any government official who violates an individual's due process rights can be subject to criminal sanctions. And so I get rid of that code because I said we're not going to be using code. So watch this. We're going to take this and we're going to do exactly what we did before. We're going to paste it in there. And when we paste it in here, again, I got to get rid of this junk. You go. And you go. And then one more. All right. Now we're going to put... And you see how it says the 14th Amendment? Uh-uh. We're going to do the 5th Amendment because we're going to do this right here. Copy. Because that's our point. B. And when we do 4th, we're going to do 5th Amendment. And... Fifth Amendment. Okay, now, and we do one more. All right, now we got that. Now we got to deal with this right here. We're going to do this right here, copy, and we're going to come back to perplexity. All we're doing is taking each one of the statements and we're putting in perplexity.com. It's giving us our facts. We don't need to state anything else but facts on the record. There is no reason for us to be arguing. Okay, now we're going to do this again. See, we're saying the Civil Rights Act of 1866. You notice how they keep giving us a stupid code? We're specifically using the Civil Rights Act of 1866. Now, we'll show you how to clean that up in a second. Remember, we've already asked... Um, What's his face? Kevin, the question. Now we're going to finish this part right here, and then I got to go finish uh, proofreading a motion. I have a couple of motions I have to do. And with that being said, let's do this. We're going to go here, and we're going to do this. Copy. And we're going to come here, and we're going to do locomotive A. And then we're gonna go one, two, three, down one, up one, over two. Okay, then we get rid of this link right here. And we're gonna do this. And we're gonna do this. Now you see how it keeps giving us 
we're going to get rid of that junk and we're going to come back here copy and paste um all right there you go now again the same ten thousand dollar fine is the exact same thing that is defined in the act okay so all we're doing is including the same thing we can add the rest but guess what we're going to do now we're going to go we've done all of this and we have this whole outline copy now we're going to go back to open ai and we're going to talk to kevin because yeah we're going to say hey kevin i need some help Kevin, comma, in preparing for the mock trial, this is what I have so far. Can you help me put this in a format that the mock trial judge will recognize as coming from an actual experienced attorney? but keep it within the context for which it is presented? Question mark. Stop listening. It couldn't handle it again, y'all. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get it to do it again. And that's why I copied it because what happens is I'm gonna have to refresh. Now, when it does put it up like this, you can copy it from there, but I'd rather copy it after I type it because I'm asking for so much so that it does not get rid of everything that I've already done. Look at there, it's it's frozen. It don't like it. Too many of y'all are using it now. We got all of these extra add-ons, and so please stand by. There's been a lot of talk about OpenAI and Google's chat that they call, I uh, forgot what it's called, Serenity or whatever it's called. Um, the uh, system came back on. I didn't ask for it to come back on. I turned it completely off. And so the AI system decided to turn it on. Right in the middle of turning it off. And you can't suddenly stop. Um, sorry, that's the song. I'm ready to learn, ready to learn, ready to learn. And ladies and gentlemen, it's going to produce this motion. And from this motion that we just did, now we're just doing a petition for redress of grievance, okay? But any motion you're trying to do, you can do exactly what I just did to produce your motion or motions. Now I'm saying motion, but trust me, I mean petition. We don't want to use motion. You see how he kept the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution? Now, I'm stepping away from the computer for a second because I have food on the stove and I don't want my food to uh, get to the point to where it don't like me. So I have to be gentle to my food. Okay, but the, the what do you call it? The flame is on low. Want to let you know, I got a, a, a message from someone telling me, and his name is Carl. And Carl said, hey, you shouldn't use the silver plated silverware says because that stuff has that nickel plating on it that 
nickel cobite or something like that. I forgot what he said it was. It says that junk will cause you to have cancer. And usually people get prostate cancer messing with that stuff. And I said, no. He said, yes. I said, no. He said, yes. I said, but no. He said, but yes. And so he told me, I said, there, this is Walmart I'm at right now. They ain't got nothing else but this, this cancer causing stuff. So he told me, he says, well, then get wood. I said, I ain't a white person. I'm sorry, I'm kidding. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me let you know, he was right. He was right. Now remember, uh-oh, let me, let, me, let me get all the way down here. I don't know what happened when I walked away. He was typing, and let's see. Okay, yeah, I went up too high. Whew. I, I was like, what do you do? Because uh, I walked away from the computer. Now, we're going to come back here. Now, remember, we have all of this right here. And now we're going to replace everything. Say what? Yeah, we're going to replace everything. And then we're going to repeat, rinse, repeat. So we're going to repeat one more time. We're going to, we already have this, okay? Now, this goes on the next line. Remember, this goes in the middle. I already showed you how I did it, okay? This goes, where's the case number? Oh, petition number. This is going to go, no, this goes on the next line, sorry. But it goes to the end. Cha-ching. All right, then that first name, your name, and then we're going to put you. Next line, indent, one more indent, and then we're going to put you, next line, uh-oh, we got to put you all the way to the end, so let's see if you can get there, and then we're going to put you, next line, and then we're going to do respondent, next line, then indent, indent, and stop it, then we're going to put... Now, I liked my title, so we're going to get back to my title. And for remonstrance in the style of an application for the enforcement of an administrative order. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Give me a second, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just doing the aesthetics. And <clears throat> sorry, don't have the mute button on this microphone like I had on the other one. This is three, one, two, three. Now I gotta do back because it likes to do the stupid thing about changing everything and I don't wanna change everything. And now we're going to do this one. This is four. And it is Roman numeral four. Then back. Then back. And then forward. And then the summary is not a number at all. Well, actually, it is. So it's five. And then this one is nothing. It's not a number or anything. 
it's just the conclusionary part. But we're not going to call it a conclusion because we ain't bringing nothing to no conclusion. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you see, this is a simple petition. If you want to add to it, you can add to it. This is two pages. It says exactly what we needed to say. It's a simple petition. Would you send, give us a link to that one so you put it up online so we can have access to it? I will put it up online so you guys can have access to it. Okay? And the name of the petition, it's going to be called a petition for redress of grievance. This is your premise. But we just showed you how to create your own petitions. Okay? There are a couple of other tricks, but I don't have the time to show you guys right now. I got a lot of work to do. So we're going to save this and we're going to add it online so that you guys will have access to it. And we can't do Google Drive because ooh, wait, Google Drive is a piece of, I mean, um, it, it's, yeah, Google Drive is a piece of, I mean, you know, so we can't do Google Drive. All right, but ladies and gentlemen, here is your sample petition. The only thing is I'm going to do one other thing that they don't do because they don't know no better. We're going to go insert, and then we're going to go all the way over here to, where are you at? Page number. Couldn't see it because I was covering it. Now we're going to put it at the bottom of the page. And when we put it at the bottom of the page, we're going to do this one because I like the way this one looks. See that right there? I like the way that looks. So we're going to put the page number there. And there's your petition. Now it's going to be three pages now. Okay, but when you finish it, it's going to be mo. So it's still two pages. All right, you can double space and all that stuff later. But right now, this is the basics of it. It just says the United States Constitution is an administrative document that outlines the structure of the federal government and its powers. The three branches of government are executive, legislative, judicial, with separate powers. The act acts as a check and balances, uh, that act as a checks and balances. The petitioner represent, uh, presents this petition to enforce an administrative order against the respondents. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land, and all federal state agents have taken an oath to uphold it. We're making factual statements. So that's why we say take judicial notice. The petitioner requests the court to take judicial notice of the following facts and conclusions of law. When you ask the court to take judicial notice of a fact, and if it is not controverted, in other words, if nobody objects to it, then they, these are the facts of the case. You can establish the facts of the case by establishing the facts at the very beginning by only stating fact. You don't state, and they've been using my social security number and access in my account. Lord have mercy, people. If only you guys know that there is no account that they're trying to access. Lord have mercy. That's why, you, anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this document will be up. We'll go ahead and save it now. And there you go. Again, we've already showed you once on Ask Kevin how to create a motion. Well, now we're showing you how to use the various simple tools that are all free for creating a motion for court. And perplexity.ai, they give you the top five results. You just have to ask it a specific question. Sometimes it's wrong. That's why you got to, if you test it out, see if it's going to give you the right answer. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, there you go. That shows you how off the chain chat GPT and the other AI softwares are. Things will never be the same. Things will never be the same. All right, I got to go. Y'all take care. Oh, and uh, by the way, when they try to compare it to whether an AI wrote it or something like that, that one they can compare whether an AI wrote it. But the original one where you just copy and paste, pay attention, the original one where you just copied and paste, they won't be able to because perplexity.ai is giving you the actual wording from the actual websites. You feel me? All right, got to go. Take care. Arriba.